it is our pleasure to be joined by the head football coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers. He's back for his annual visit, people. Neil Brown is in the house via phone this time. Didn't want to show your face, coach. What are we doing? Come on, man. I am en route to Columbus, Ohio for 12 and under softball. This is my kind of our last weekend before we start on Tuesday and my middle child is playing um, in a softball term. So I'm heading, I'm heading in that direction. Well, um, man, it's awesome season last year. You guys had a nice end, had the nice bowl win, nine games, nine wins rather. And, um, probably looking to build on that what's the offseason been like with all the change I know it's I know it's been wild with the the conference realignment but what has the focus been like in your building no it's been good you know we 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 had a really solid year last year laid a complete egg against you guys but uh, we uh that was our worst game by far but we did we had a we had a good year I thought we were a young football team last year that that played um that took a step, took a significant step. And now it's, it's about how do, how do we take the, the, take the other step? And that's to go from a a really good football team to a championship level football team. And that is, that's the next step for us. And, and there's a lot of excitement, you know, as we finished our summer uh, workouts last night and we'll start guys report back on Tuesday. So a little long weekend. uh, And then we'll start, have our first practice on Wednesday. So we're ready to roll. I assume, you know, roster retention, uh, roster building, it, it's become it's become so important you know, with, with the way that the portal works. I I got to assume, Neil, it, was it much easier to retain and build the roster coming off a nine and four season as opposed to some of the seasons you had previous? Like what what was that process like? after such a successful season for for your program well winning helps for sure but also we've been able to go out and and raise the amount we have in our collective which is which is equally as important in the in the world we're in right now and so we are you know i think that retention comes down to you've got to be able to 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 pay the athletes uh, and then you've got to provide them an experience and then the third thing from an individualistic standpoint for the player is they've got to be playing, you know, meaningful, meaningful snaps and a system that, that they feel like is showcasing their skills. And so the, all those things work into retention. And so we've grown our collective. Um, we do feel like that we provide as, as good as the experience there is in college football. And so we've done, we, we've been able to retain over the last two years um, almost our entire productive, our production. Uh, we lost some guys just like everybody else, but most of our production that had eligibility left, we've been able to retain. Oh, this is bad. Ted's muted and he doesn't realize it. Oh, Sorry what a noob. That. Idiot. <laughs> I'll edit it out. You know I won't. You know I'm leaving it in. How do you find the balance when it comes to the NIL stuff for recruiting and transfer portal guys? I mean, that's that so, seems like it's the yeah, most it's a- difficult part of it. Well, that's a really good question because it's going to change again. But for the last two years, the rules have, for the most part, stayed the same. And so the world we've lived in is we want to do a really good job um, at the high school recruiting level of evaluating talent and then bring them into our program and develop them. And we've heavily invested in strength conditioning, nutrition, recovery, sports science, sports psychology, in the hopes of really developing guys at a higher rate than maybe some of the people we compete against and then being able to retain those guys that we have developed. Um, We've been in the portal, but we haven't used a large amount of financial resources in the portal. And so now the rules are changing again. And so your roster has got to get it 105. Uh, It's revenue sharing now that we're paying players through rather than through a third party collective. And so, and it's happening fast. So this is, going to happen it's going to go through when the house case is completely settled but these are decisions that are going to have to be made in november and december and there's still a lot of unknown so there's you got to be flexible you got to be ready to adjust neil there is there's so much going on now for a head coach of a big time college football program where have you chosen to allocate your time because it 
there's just not enough time in the day to do everything that a head coach has to do. So like, what have you delegated the most? And then like, what, what is your, what do you mainly focus your time on now with all of these demands for, for a head coach? So this is kind of the buckets that, that I've put my, that I invest the most time in is relationships with players. And you've got to be intentional about, um, both formal meeting, well, what I mean by uh, formal is just scheduled meetings, one-on-one meetings, and then informal, meeting them kind of where they're at, whether it's in the weight room, training room, cafeteria. So that's the first one, relationship with the players. The second is just from uh, the organization is, you know, the, the management of it, the scheduling, those type of items. The third is really leading um, not necessarily coaching the coaches, but just leading the coaches in the, the key support areas. And then the the last one for me is on the offensive side. And that's where I came up through the profession. Um, and so those are the buckets that I invest the most time. And then we've gone out and, and hired people that, that that I fully trust and I believe in the to carry out the leads and things where I'm not an expert. And that's the way I handle things in my personal life, professional life. It's, um, you can only be an expert in so many things. And I think where people get in trouble is when they try to be an ex- they try to lead or make decisions in areas that you're not an expert. And so we've gone out and hired experts that, you know, our, our defense coordinator is, is a defensive expert. Our special teams coordinator is a special teams expert. Our strength conditioning coach, he's the, he's the, he's that, the uh, the strength conditioning expert, so on, so on. That's that's how we've done it, and I think you have to do that to be successful. Now, other people are doing it different different ways. That doesn't mean that the way that we're doing is the best, but that's the way that from a from a head coach perspective here at West Virginia that we've chosen to go. Now the nil, all the off field stuff is changing, constantly changing. But I mean, I guess I'd call this on field like. The, the actual football part of things, the tra- not the transfer board, but the uh, conference realignment, rather. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas, out. The Pac-12 is is no more. Big 12 gained some of those teams. Um, maybe more to happen. The You know, the ACC stuff that's going on, Clemson, Florida State to the Big 12. Like, what do you think the future is for college football whenever it comes to the conference stuff? Is, is this going to – continue to be a bunch of musical chairs yeah and and i'll go back to the answer to the other question like those are things that i listed that that i'm good at then the necessary piece is is nil and i deal with that every single day and so i didn't i didn't really finish my thoughts there the older you get the more uh, random your thoughts get so i wanted to finish that but realignment wise i don't think it's finished um i think we're going through a really turbulent time and I think it'll continue to be turbulent for the next few years. Uh, I, I really think the Big 12 is, is on really good footing right now. Uh, and I, I really believe that we firmly established ourselves as third in the pecking order. And our, the trajectory of our conference is is really strong. And I really think we have the most balanced league. Um, there's, there's other leagues that have had – that are more top-heavy, that have had some more success in the playoffs. And that's kind of the next deal for us in the Big 12 is we've got to – We've got to do a better job in the in the playoff. Um, you know, I, where it stands 10 years from now, I don't know. I, I just don't see how we continue uh, down the road we're on where there's not some kind of breakaway where whether it's 50 schools, 60 schools, however many schools it is, is there's a breakaway. And then college football is by itself. And we have a commissioner. And, and my hope is it's back to regional. I think that's the best thing for the fans. Um, but I don't think you'll see any really completely major shift until there's a slowdown in the money coming in. And, and, and right now there's no slowdown. So there's no, re, there's no real reason to change the current dynamics. Neil, do you, do you think the 12 team playoff, right? This is the first year of it. Do you think it kind of infuses some energy into the sport having more spots for more teams. Like I, I think you guys are a perfect example. You put together a great year in the big 12 and you, you could find yourself 
in the college football playoff. Like, does do you think that infuses programs with a little bit more energy around the country? Absolutely. You know, you go to 12 teams, um, you're going to have – so 12 are getting in, and you're probably looking anywhere from 20 to 25 that are probably alive for those spots heading into the middle of November, which has never been the case. Um, and it gives access. You know, we have two guaranteed spots in the Big 12, and, and depending on how the league goes, we could have three or upwards of four that are getting in the playoff. And so it definitely – it adds it adds another dimension. Um, but I think that's something that's not getting talked about is just access. It gives real accessibility to that playoff. And then the playoffs, no different than March Madness, no different than the college baseball where we saw where we see teams go on runs at the end of the year. Once you're in the tournament, anything can happen because you don't have to be the best team overall. You just got to be better that night. And so I think it gives access. It, it, it's definitely going to make the month of November much more entertaining. More teams are going to be alive. Um, but I, I do think it's a definite fit. There's going to be some side effects of it. What those are, I'm not sure. Um, but it's going to be it for a really exciting end of the regular season. Yeah, well, it, it's made the schedules fascinating. Um, but we're dealing with that ourselves. I mean, there's a lot of similarities with you guys. You know, Oklahoma's pick number mm-hmm. eight in the SEC, and we play pretty much everyone that's ranked ahead of us. And yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah. yeah, looking at your schedule, it's about the same. And then, oh, by the way, throw in Pitt and Penn State in the non-conference, and you guys got yourself a, a pretty brutal schedule, challenging. It's challenging. Yeah, I, I think you look at it one or two ways. You have to look at it. It is going to be challenging. That's the facts. But it's also a lot of opportunity there. You know, we've got to, we're going to have a ton of eyes on us week one when we host Penn State. That's a game we're really looking forward to. I uh, have a lot of respect for that program, what James has done. Um, but they're coming They're coming to Morgantown to kick off the year. And, and this place will be electric. You guys have been here. It's loud. It's a tough place to play. It's hard to get to. I mean, um, and, and our fans are looking forward to that. This is kind of the, the last game in the series. We went there last year. It's a rivalry that was played for many years in a row that was, quite frankly, just really one, one-sided. You know, Penn State has, has dominated the, the rivalry in modern times, and this is the last crack we get at them for a long time. And so um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be electric, and, and we've got – we're going to have a really good football team. And what we've got to do is we've got to be prepared to be at our best early in the season, week one, and then we play one of the top rivalry games in all of college football week three at Pitt. Looking at your team, Neil, it's got to feel good having Garrett Green back with kind of the dual threat that he is at the quarterback position. But as you guys head into training camp, what do you really feel is the strength of your football team right now? Well, I think if you look at it offensively, uh, Garrett Green, our running backs, and we've got five of our top seven offensive linemen. So the strength of our football team has got to be running the football. Now we're excited about because we got some some young guys that are that played a lot for us last year at wideout that it, we feel like they're going to be much improved. And then defensively, it's going to be the same thing. Our front is going to lead us. Um, we've been good on the on the defensive line. We feel like we've got depth there. Uh, we've got some young linebackers that, that that we're going to play the best at that position that we have during my tenure here. And so I think that both our fronts is, is really going to be the strength. I'm looking at the depth chart here, and, I, you know, I don't know how accurate this is, but – as I look at the offense and defense, it looks like a veteran team. I mean, a ton of juniors and seniors, especially on the line of scrimmage, that you got. I mean, that's that's got to be one of the biggest advantages in college football is whenever you can return experienced guys. Yeah, we've got some guys that have been through the battles, I think. But the key to that is every – and you guys know this from, from playing and living it. It all starts afresh. So when we start practice on Tuesday, or when on Wednesday, we report on Tuesday, it's a blank slate. Now, what do you do? Now, th- that experience really helps you um, deal with things, especially on the road or when you're going through adversity. But what you've done in the past really doesn't matter anymore. So you've got to be able to, to start with a clean slate, build. Nobody cares what we did last year. you know. It, and, and so that's my message to our guys. But we do have some returning players. We've got some guys that have played a lot of snaps. Um, but 
the expectation, and I believe it's reasonable, is that they raise their level of play. On the defensive side, Neil, it wasn't too long ago, man, where you guys were playing at extremely high level on the defensive side of the ball, one of the best in the Big 12, arguably the best in the Big 12 just a couple seasons ago. Are you are you headed back to that? Do you feel like you guys you know, took a little step last year and now this is the season – where you get back to playing the type of type of defense you guys want to play at West Virginia. So if you look at our kind of the, our path over the last five years is 19, we were okay on defense. 20, we were elite. One of the best defenses in the country. 21, we were good. Um, and then really fell off in 22. Now the fall off in 22, it wasn't like we forgot how to coach. You know, what we did is we didn't have any money. And so we lost a lot of really good players. And and nobody really talks about that, but that's the truth. And and then last er, and then in twenty three we were rebounded and we were we were okay. We were kind of middle of the pack, and we believe that we return enough. And, and really, it's going to depend on how we play in the secondary. We've gone and and really made some key additions in the transfer portal, uh, in the secondary with the with a full expectation we're going to play better there. And if our secondary plays at a higher level, I believe that we can have one of the top tier defenses in our league. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. Like One of the things that it's probably going to be different team to team, but the in-helmet communication stuff, how, how big of a factor is that for you guys? Is that something that you're going to be leaning on, or is that just maybe a little added added bonus there to talk to the, the quarterback, maybe some tips and reminders before the snap? It helps. Offensively, it helps. It's going to – We'll be able to do some things. We'll be able to dic- dictate some things to the defense that maybe you couldn't before. Um, and so that's going to help. We used it in the bowl game. Uh, we used it in spring practice really the last three years. And so we have some experience using it. But I do think it's beneficial. On the flip side, on defense, nobody's nobody's really talking about this. But I think it has a chance to, to really be um, – to really change the game as far as defensively. Because there's so much pre-snap movement now, and people are playing with tempo, and so the coach being able to talk directly to a player on the field, you're going to be able to make adjustments much easier. And that's what we found using it in the bowl game last year against North Carolina. You know, offensively, yeah, it helps, but defensively, I thought it was a major change and, and something that really benefited the defense. Well, if the North Carolina game is any indication, if my memory serves me correctly, you end up getting a bunch of mayonnaise dumped on you after whooping up <laughs> yeah, on them. That's, so. that's accurate. That's accurate. They that do was, that to the losing coach. Yeah, that was uh, quite the visual. <laughs> I was very uh, – I had a nice chuckle when I saw them dump all that mayonnaise on you, Neil. Now, I, I just have one more, man, and it's kind of another big change, but I'm interested in how big of a change you think it is in college football this year with the rule change that analysts can coach. And I know that some programs, you know, have been tiptoeing around that and yeah, you know, for years, but now that and I always thought it was a silly rule, but now that those staffers can can coach the players during the game, during practice, like how how big of a change is that in your mind? How big of a change is it for you guys? Well, it's a rule that needed to change. I'm not sure it would have held up in a court of law. And so it needed to change. Let's let's say that first. Um, as far as on field, you're just going to be more efficient in your coaching. You know, think about it like this. You know, if you're looking around and you're trying to you're trying to pick a school for for one of your kids, you're looking for really the student to teacher ratio. And what's happened now with this rule is the coach to player ratio has become much smaller. And so if you take offensive line now, rather than one one coach trying to coach 15 to 18 guys now you can have two sometimes three and now it's a much smaller group of guys that you're coaching or meeting with same with the defensive line and so I think that's where you're going to see it I think it'll really help uh, teams overall fundamentally and it's going to help in game you're going to have more more information than maybe you did before Um, and so I think it's a quality it needed to happen Uh, this is one of those rules it's probably past due but I do think it's good for the overall level of play you guys got picked 14th in the preseason poll last year. That became, uh, I think, kind of something that you and your team rallied around. I remember you telling us 
when you joined us last year, Neil, that you, you guys kind of put it everywhere in the facility pick seventh this year. Did you just put like 14 and then put like divided by two next to all the 14s? Like how is seven. Could you get the guys as fired up as you could with the, uh, with the pick of 14th last season? Yeah, to me, this year it's not necessarily as much about our team because I think in our league you could probably make an argument for nine, maybe upwards of ten teams that have a realistic chance to win our win our conference this year. Uh, so not necessarily uh, where we're picked team wise. I'm not offended by it, or um, I think we're better than that. But we got to go out and prove them. Where I'm really disappointed is just where some of our players are are being evaluated at. You know, Garrett Green, if you just had his numbers without his name and you put it against – this is a really good quarterback league. If you put his rushing and passing stats up against the other guys in our league and took out their names, I think they, he would he would measure up really favorably. So I think he's really being undervalued. Um, we've got two running backs that are back-to-back freshman All-Americans, and Jaheim White C.J. Donaldson. Nobody's talking about them. Nobody. And we've got, I think, the premier offensive lineman in our league and Wyatt Milam, who I think is going to be a first-round pick. You know, he didn't even make first team all conference last year, which is crazy to me. Um, and then we've got two defensive guys. I took the media day, Sean Martin, who's been really productive for three years, and Aubrey Burks, who's been on all conference teams, and nobody's talking about them. And so that's where my issues are: is we've got really good players here, and Wyatt's the only one that made it all con- the preseason all conference team. So I think we've got to go out and continue to perform. And we've got a great opportunity early in the season again, in two rivalry games. But our players are much, in my opinion, are are much better and stand uh, in our league and should be on the all conference preseason all conference team and they and they simply weren't. Neil, you're the man. We always appreciate you joining us every year. And now that we're in different conferences, like I can openly cheer for West Virginia each and every Saturday. It feels good, man. I'm going to be cheered like hell for you. I appreciate it. Hey guys, y'all do a, y'all do a great job and, and, uh, best of luck to you Sooners, man, down in the Southeastern conference. Hey, we'll, we'll take all the luck we can get brother. Thanks man. Appreciate you. Yep. See you.